We are proud to present the first of four Black History presentations, which will be held each Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. during the month of February. Tonight, our students will portray Black Americans who were trailblazers in this country. February 9th will feature successful Black Hardin Countyans, as well as honor the late Tanya Seabrooks, a real game changer in Hardin County. February 16th will feature a Texas-based world geography and American history teacher who will discuss black, his black people before slavery. February 23rd will feature a biological anthropologist who will discuss the myth of race. These series were made possible by the awesome work of the Education Committee of the NAACP, Carolyn Hicks, Linda Reynolds, Michelle Jones, and me. Meg Rios is part of this committee, but was unable to participate during the planning. We want to thank our awesome children who will be pre presenting this evening and to their wonderful parents for allowing them to participate in our Black History Month celebration this evening. We want to thank our program producers, Michelle Jones, Calandra Seeley, Calandra and Ch Chante Hicks, excuse me. And lastly, but not least, our brilliant technology team, Michelle Jones and Calandra Seeley. Now, I would like to introduce you to our moderator for this evening. She is originally from San Joaquin, California. She moved to North Carolina and settled in Hardin County. She has four children. She and her husband have four children and are raising two grandchildren. She currently works as a social worker for the Child Protective Services. I present to you, Calandra Seeley. Thank you so much, Ms. George, for such a great introduction. Um, I am honored to, to be here and to be a part of this program this evening. Um, we will start the program with our first presenter, which will be Ms. Kaylani Bradshaw. Ready? Okay. Go ahead, see. It. Come on, big girl. Be the change. Be the change we seek. Thank you, Kaylani. Be the change we seek. Thank you, big girl. Today is also Kaylani's birthday, so she's a little hyped off cupcakes and cake. So our next presenter would be Miss Gabrielle Calhoun. Win like Kamala, inspire like Michelle, fight like Stacy, perform like Viola, produce like Shonda, compete like Serena, worship like Shirley. I am Black History. Thank you, Gabby. That was really nice. Up next, we have Cheyenne Vine. Who am I? I was born a slave in 1797 in Sweater Kill, New York. My real name was Isabella Bomfrey. I had a daughter named Sophia, and I also had a son, but he was illegally sold into slavery in Alabama. After being sold at least twice, I earned my freedom by running away to a nearby farm family who despised slavery. My master found me, but these kind neighbors agreed to buy me for $20. After the deal, they set me free. It was also because of this they helped me get reunited with my five-year-old son. Once I was free, I became a women's rights advocate. I did work in the Civil War, which got me an invitation to see President Lincoln. I told him about my life as a slave. In the early 1830s, I participated in religious revivals, and by 1843, I knew this spirit, and it called on me to preach the truth. This is how I got my name. The Mars rover that was built by NASA was also named after me. I am Mr. Jenner Truth. Thank you so much, Ms. Vine. That was great. Up next, we have Ms. Braylon Rogers. When you learn to read, you will be forever free. By Frederick Douglass. Thank you so much, Braylon. That was great. You did awesome. Next, we have Mr. Isaiah Beasley. I was born in February 1818 on a Maryland plantation. When I was 20 years old, I escaped from slavery by running away from my master. I wrote an autobiography or a personal story about my life as a slave. I became a national leader who gave many speeches 
to abolish or end the en enslavement of black people. Alaire supported women's suffrage or the right for women to vote. Many people said that I gave great speeches. During the Civil War, I talked to President Abraham Lincoln about allowing black men to fight in the military for their freedom. My name is Frederick Douglass. My most famous book was called Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. Thank you so much for sharing Isaiah and sharing the book. Next, we have Ms. Jaden Grundy. Hello, everyone. I was born March, who am I? I was born March 18, 22. I was known for freeing slaves. I took over 19 troops, but overall I had been a hero to 300 people. I sadly passed March 10, 1913. I was born in Dorchester County, Maryland. I was 25 when things ended, but I'm so glad for what I did. I am Harry Tubman. Thank you, Jaden, for a powerful speech. Next, we have Kennedy York. Who am I? I was born in Alabama, February 4th, 1913. I was arrested in Alabama because I did not give up my seat to a white man. That is where I got my name, the First Lady of Civil Rights. Our, our, lady, our First Lady of Civil Rights died October 25. Some states have a day named after me. She is my favorite person, and her name is Rosa Parks. Thank you, Kennedy. That was awesome. Next, we have Ms. Carrington York. I was born August 26, 26, 1918. I was already in high school by the time I was 10 and graduated college with a mathematics degree at 18. While working at NASA, I was sometimes called the female computer. I, if you watch it, if you know who I am, I am Katherine Johnson. Thank you, Ms. Short. <laughs> Next, we have Kaden Beasley. Who am I? I was a social activist and played a key role in the American Civil Rights Movement. I sought for equality for African Americans, the economically disadvantaged, and victims of injustice through peaceful protests. I was the driving force behind the Montgomery bus boycott and the March on Washington. I was, an, I was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. I was honored to have a U.S. federal holiday named after me that has been celebrated in January since 1986. I am Martin Luther King Jr. That's great, Mr. Beasley. Thanks for sharing. Up next, we have Miss Samaya Edmondson. Who am I? Did you know I am the first African American woman to win? three gold track medals and one Olympics. I did not walk without red racing until I was nine due to a childhood illness. My left leg was twisted, but that, that did not stop me. I play basketball in high school. I won four Olympics medals and started a foundation to help young athletes. I am from my Rudolph. Thank you so much, Samaya. You did great. Next we have Tanaya Jenkins. Who am I? I was born in Mississippi. My neighborhood was very poor and I was raised by my very young single mother. I could read and write before I was three years old. I was high school class president and once met President Richard Nixon. I attended, I, I, I attended Texas, Tennessee State University and studied speech communications and performing arts. I was the first African-American to host my own talk show. I received many awards, 
providing the way for others to 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 success. I am Oprah Winfrey. Thank you for sharing tonight. That was great. Our next presenter is Mr. Marcus Dixon Jr. Who am I? I was born on August 4th, 1961 in Alanumu, Hawaii. My name means the one who is blessed. I worked at Baskin Robbins as a teenager growing up in Hawaii. I was the first African-American editor of the Harvard Law Review. Before Harvard, I went to Occidental College in Los Angeles and graduated. I went to Columbia University in New York and graduated, and I finished at Harvard Law School and graduated. I married um, a lady formerly known as Michelle Robinson, who I met at Chicago law, law Firm. I was a civil rights attorney, a community organizer, a lecturer, and professor. I was the time person of the year in 2008 and 2012. I earned a medal from the United States, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and the Nobel Peace Prize in Norway. I was the first black president of the United States of America. I am Barack Hussein Obama II. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Our next presenter will be Mr. Jaquan Hip Hill. Who am I? I was born on February 17, 1963 in Brooklyn, New York. Grew up in Wilmington, North Carolina. My mom was a bank teller who wrote several books. My father was a maintenance worker turned manager at General Electric. I attended the University of North Carolina during the years of 1981 through 1984. I am an Olympic gold medalist, won that during the summer of 1984. I retired three times from my sport. I have won six NBA championships, five-time Most Valuable Player Award, and I pledged to donate $100 million over the next 10 years to organizations designed to ensure racial equality, to end police brutality, and inst institutional racism. I am Michael Jordan. Thank you for such a powerful speech, Mr. Hemphill. Now we have Miss Tatiana. Who am I? I was born in 1954, the same year the Supreme Court's Brown versus Board of Education decision to the schools when I was in kindergarten. I was chosen to take a difficult test that would determine if I could go to a white school. I passed the difficult test and was escorted by federal marshals on my first day of school. I didn't know the riots was dangerous. When I grew up, I formed my own foundation to help parents take a more active role in their child's education. I am Ruby Bridget. Thank you, Tatiana. Next, we have Miss Shania Vine. Who am I? I'm not only the wife of former President Obama and mother of Malia and Sasha, I'm also a Harvard Law School graduate. Before obtaining my law degree at Harvard, I attended Princeton University, where I received degrees in psychology and African-American studies. While working as first lady, I decided to switch careers because I wanted a job where I could help people make their community and neighborhoods better. After my law career, I worked at the University of Chicago. Chicago, where I developed the university's, the university's first community service program and helped increase volunteerism. I am Michelle Obama. Thank you, Ms. Vine. Next, we have Amaya Gilio. Who am I? I am an American politician and attorney serving as the 49th and current vice president of the United States. I am the first female vice president. I am a member of the the Democratic Party. I currently serves as the U.S. Senate and as Attorney General of California. I am Camille Harris. We'll move on to Mr. Benjamin Richardson. Who am I? I was born in 1976 in South Carolina. My mom was a nurse. My dad worked at a factory. I played basketball and I wanted to be an architect when I was a kid. 
I went to Howard University in Washington, D.C. I was an actor and a playwright, and I was inspired by Denzel Washington and Felicia Rashad. My first movie was 42, and I played Jackie Robinson, the first black baseball player in the major leagues. My most famous role was as the first black superhero. I died from colon cancer last year, but I helped lots of sick children. My name is Chadwick Boseman, but you know me as the Black Panther. Oh my God, that was so nice, Mr. Richardson. Thank you for including the Black Panther mask in the end. You're welcome. Our next presenter, which would be Mr. Adrian Calhoun. Who am I? I was born on August 23rd, 1978. I'm considered to be one of the best basketball players in the history of NBA. I played guard for the Los Angeles Lakers for 20 years. I am known for my touch defense, vertical leap, and my ability to score winning baskets at the end of the game. I am widely considered the best basketball players of the 2000s and perhaps one of the best of all time. I was a, a member of the gold medal winning 2008 Beijing Olympic Games and 2012 London Olympics Games U.S. men's basketball teams. On January 26, 2020, I was killed alongside my daughter and a group traveling to a girls basketball game in a helicopter when it crashed. I am the Black M Mamba also known as Kobe Bryant. Thank you, Mr. Calhoun. Um, next, we have Ms. Janiah Banks. Who am I? I was born in Waterloo, Iowa on April 9th, 1976. I am married to Fergizi Hannah Jones. We have one daughter together, Nigia. I attended the University of Notre Dame in the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. I'm an investigative reporter for the New York Times Magazine. I'm a Pulitzer winning reporter covering racial injustice for the New York Times Magazine and creator of the landmark of 1619 Project. I see my work as forcing us into hypocrisy, forcing us to confront the truth that we would rather ignore. My 1619 project commemorates the 400th anniversary of being of the beginning of slavery and what would become the United States by examining slavery's modern legacy and reframing the way we understand this histories and contributions of Black Americans to our nation. Our democracy's founding ideals were false when we were written. Black Americans have fought to make them true. My work so offended former President Trump, that he tried to ban my work from all public schools. I am Nicole Hannah Jones. Thank you for such a powerful speech. That was amazing, Ms. Bates. Um, on behalf of Ms. Joyce, Ms. Jones, and myself, we want to thank all of the presenters that gave their speech tonight. We know that it took a lot of courage to get out here and read. <laughs> your speech in front of everybody, people you know, people you may not know. So the next thing we have on the program is that we're gonna present a slideshow presentation. Upon completion of the slideshow, we will have a short story read by Mrs. Jones. Thanks again as I present to you the slideshow.
there were no black people, what would we be? This is a story of a little boy named Theo who woke up one morning and asked his mother, Mom, what if there were no black people in the world? Well, his mother thought about that for a moment and then said, Son, follow me around today and let's just see what it would be like if there were no black people in the world. Mom said, Now go get dressed and we will get started. Theo ran to his room to put on his clothes and shoes. His mother took one look at him and said, Theo, where are your shoes? And those clothes are all wrinkled, son. I must iron them. However, when she reached for the ironing board, it was no longer there. You see, Sarah Boone, a black woman, invented the ironing board. And Jan E. Metzlinger, a black man, invented the shoe lasting machine. Oh, well, she said, please go and do something to your hair. Theo ran in his room to comb his hair, but the comb was not there. You see, Walter Sammons, a black man, invented the comb. Theo decided to just brush his hair, but the brush was gone. You see, Lydia O. Newman, a black female, invented the brush. Well, this was a sight. No shoes, wrinkled clothes, hair a mess, even mom's hair without the hair care inventions of Madam C.J. Walker, a black woman. Well, you get the picture. Mom told Theo, let's do our chores around the house and then take a trip to the grocery store. Theo's job was to sweep the floor. He swept and swept and swept. When he reached for the dustpan, it was not there. You see, Lloyd P. Ray, a black man, invented the dustpan. So he swept his pile of dirt over in the corner and left it there. He then decided to mop the floor, but the mop was gone. You see, Thomas W. Stewart, a black man, invented the mop. Theo yelled to his mom, Mom, I'm not having any luck. Well, son, she said, let me finish washing these clothes and we will prepare a list for the grocery store. When the wash finished, she went to place the clothes in the dryer, but it was not there. You see, George T. Salmon, a black man, invented the clothes dryer. Mom asked Theo to get a pencil and some paper to prepare the list for the market. So Theo ran for the paper and pencil, but noticed the pencil lid was broken. Well, he was out of luck because John Love, a black man, invented the pencil sharpener. Mom reached for a pen, but it was not there because William Purvis, a black man, invented the fountain pen. As a matter of fact, Lee Burridge, a black man, invented the typewriting machine. W. A. Lovett, a black man, invented the advanced printing press. Theo and his mother decided to just head out to the market. Well, when Theo opened the door, he noticed the grass was as high as he was tall. You see, John Burr, a black man, invented the lawnmower. They made their way over to the car and found that it just wouldn't go. You see, Richard Spikes, a black man, invented the automatic gear shift. And Joseph Gamble, a black man, invented the supercharged system for internal combustion engines. They also noticed that the few cars that were moving were running into each other and having wrecks because there were no traffic signals. You see, Garrett A. Morgan, a black man, invented a traffic light. Well, it was getting late, so they walked to the market, got their groceries, and returned home. Just when they were about to put away the milk, eggs, and butter, they noticed the refrigerator was gone. You see, John Standard, a black man, invented the refrigerator. So they just left the food on the counter. 
By this time, Theo noticed he was getting mighty cold. Mom went to turn up the heat, and what do you know? Alice Parker, a black female, invented the heating furnace. <laughs> Even in the summertime, they would have been out of luck because Frederick Jones, a black man, invented the air conditioner. It was almost time for Theo's father to arrive home. He usually takes the bus, but there was no bus because its precursor was the electric trolley invented by another black man, Albert R. Robinson. He usually takes the elevator from his office on the 20th floor, but there was no elevator because Alexander Miles, a black man, invented the elevator. He also usually dropped off the office mail at a nearby mailbox, but it was no, no longer there because Philip Downing, a black man, invented the letter drop mailbox. And William Barry, a black man, invented the post marking and counseling machines. Theo and his mother sat at the kitchen table with their heads in their hands. When the father arrived, he asked, why are you sitting in the dark? Why? Because Lewis Howard Latimer, a black man, invented the filament within the light bulb. Theo quickly learned more about what it would be like if there were no black people in the world, especially if he were ever sick and needed blood. Dr. Charles Drew, a black scientist, found a way to reserve and store blood, which led to his starting the world's first blood bank. Well, what if a family member had to have a heart surgery? This would not have been possible without Dr. Daniel Hale Williams, a black doctor who performed the first open heart surgery. <laughs> so if you ever wonder, like Theo, where would we be without black people? Well, it's pretty plain to see we would still be in the dark. Other inventions by African Americans. Air conditioning unit, Frederick M. Jones, Almanac, Benjamin Banneker, auto cut off switch, Granville T. Woods, auto fishing device, George Cook, baby buggy, William H. Richardson, biscuit cutter, Alexander P. Ashbourne, blood plasma, Charles Drew, chamber commode, Thomas Elkins, clothes dryer, George T. Salmon, Curtain Rod, Samuel R. Scrotron, Curtain Rod Support, William S. Grant, Doorknob, Osborne Dorsey, Door Stop, Osborne Dorsey, Egg Beater, Willie Johnson, Electric Lamp Bulb, Louis Latimer, Elevator, Alexander Miles, Eye Protector, Paul Johnson, Eye Fire Escape Ladder, Joseph W. Winters, Fire Extinguisher, Thomas Marshall, Folding bed, Leonard C. Bailey, folding chair, Nathaniel Alexander, fountain pen, Walter B. Purvis, furniture caster, David A. Fisher, gas mask, Garrett Morgan, golf tee, George T. Grant, guitar, Robert F. Fleming Jr., hairbrush, Lydia O. Newman, hand stamp, Walter B. Purvis, ice cream scoop, Alfred L. Krell, insect destroyer gun, Albert C. Richardson, ironing board, Sarah Boone, Keychain, Frederick J. Loudon, Lattern, Michael C. Harvey, Lawn Sprinkler, John H. Smith, Lemon Squeezer, John Thomas White, Locke, Washington A. Martin, Lubricating Cup, Elijah McCoy, Lunch Pail, James Robinson, Mailbox, Paul L. Downing, Mop, Thomas W. Stewart, Peanut Butter, George W. Carver, Pencil sharpener, John L. Love, record player arm, Joseph H. Dickinson, rolling pin, John W. Reed, shampoo headrest, Charles Oren Bailiff, spark plug, Edmund Berger, stethoscope, Thomas A. Carrington, straightening comb, Madam C.J. Walker, street sweeper, Charles B. Brooks, phone transmitter, Granville T. Woods, thermostat control, Frederick M. Jones, traffic light, Garrett Morgan, Tricycle, Matthew A. Cherry. 
Thank you for joining us in our Black History Celebration.